Hi, I'm Jonathan Stevens from Lightwheel, and today I'm here with Katie Washabaugh, and she's going to talk about NVIDIA's Cosmos for autonomous driving, but this can also be transferred to robotics in general. So, uh, Katie, it's nice to meet you. Nice I look meet forward you as well. to seeing what you have to show us today. Okay, yes. So, um, here we are showing a live demo of our latest Cosmos Predict 2.5 and Cosmos Transfer 2.5 World Foundation models. Um, so, for context, developing autonomous vehicles, especially level four autonomous vehicles, um, requires a massive amount of data. And this data needs to cover every possible situation the car could encounter as it drives on a daily basis. Um, so that's inclement weather, that's any geolocation, um, rare and dangerous edge scenarios. Um, but collecting this data in the real world is virtually impossible and not advised mm -hmm. in certain scenarios. Um, so traditionally, the solution to that has been simulation. Um, but simulation has also been an arduous process of artist-generated content attempting to match the physics and properties of the real world. Um, but what generative AI has now op opened up are these world models, where we can generate the world exactly as the car would see it, um, which is incredibly exciting and accelerates this process immensely. Um, to, to show you how it works, start with our Cosmos Predict model. Um, so we're going to show a four-way intersection um, where the car is going to turn right. Um, so here we generate the trajectory. Um, and then now this is running right now. The model has generated this entire scenario with complete consistency um, through the cameras running on the vehicle, which is incredibly hard for a generative mm -hmm. model to be able to do. Like the, the model is able to remember the car I saw at the front is now to my right and then behind me. Um, and the only input we fed the model in order to generate that were these four images. Um, okay. So considering going from artist-generated content to a set of images and you have a simulation is, is truly incredible. Um, and then on top of that, we can amplify the data variation by then using transfer, which is our style transfer model. Um, so we can take this exact same scenario and let's say we want to test the car's ability to handle snow. Okay. Um, so we have it preset, but you can type in any prompt mm -hmm. you want. Uh, if people can't see, there's a, a text prompt here. And is it changed when you click on snow? Oh, yeah. So right Okay. Now, yeah, so we can go to rain, rain. and it will change. Okay, so snow. there's different text prompts. If you were to do your own sandbox, you could exactly. type in whatever you want. And then we can do what we just showed with Predict. Do the same scenario of turning right. Okay. So we run through the, the trajectory and then we output a snowy scene at night. Wow. So rather than having to wait till January <laughs> to go out and drive, uh, we can generate it in a matter of seconds. Okay. Uh, so if I was running this, I, let's say I'm a researcher and I want to just start to play with this, um, what kind of hardware do I need to just test this out in my office? Just um, So Cosmo, for Cosmos, we recommend um, eight H100 GPUs. Okay. Um, and both models are now available for download on Hugging Face. Okay. Um, so we definitely encourage you to, to try it. They can be post-trained for your use case. Um, 2.5, uh, we have trained on even more autonomous vehicle data. Um, so they are now performing well for the AV use case, um, but they are both uh, work really well for both AV and robotics. Okay. Uh, uh, so I was, it looks like there was a large update to, there was Cosmos Predict and Transfer 2.5. Uh, what's the length of video that I can I can get out of these models? Um, so that's really exciting. Um, it's now up to 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yes. Wow, that's, um, what, six times longer? Or yes. it was only 121 frames, so yeah, on the frame rate, that's, that's a lot longer. Um, okay, and then, so if I was doing Transfer, it looks like there's, this just looks nothing like a, a scene here that would, you know, this could just be a bunch of boxes of rectangles. You don't have to have like um, an already, like the, the, the other example, you had some reference photos. You can have edge lines, you can have Yeah, so like you can, just sh you can show the object level scene. Um, okay. So you, you can range from just a pure object level and generate a scenario. You can um, feed an existing sensor simulation. So if you have a drive and you want to just mm -hmm. kind of try it in different conditions or scale, like take a drive in San Francisco and recreate it in New York. Um, so it's, can, it's really variable on um, kind of what you want to use as an input and still be able to generate the same type of output. And then uh, I've noticed that uh, for some of these these different examples, uh, you can you can just do one. You don't have to do what one front, back, right, left. You can just do let's say you, sh you just maybe you're focused on a robot oh, sure. as opposed to a car, and you just 
maybe it's looking at something that's manipulating. You can just do a single output. Is it would it be quicker or uh, is um, the model just uh, optimized to do one or many? Um, no, you can definitely do one, um, and it should be kind of similar performance. Okay. Um, you know, that's kind of where we started with single frame or single kind of view. Um, but yeah, there should be no problem. In okay. Kind of single or multi view. And then, so from here, we have these models, and people are starting to train on it. Um, what what's where is this headed next? Or is it? Are we really developing this for autonomous cars, for robots, both? Uh, what what is the goal for Cosmos? Is it? Um, I mean, it's to keep running. Just keep running. <laughs> I mean, we announced this at CES this past January. It's been less than a year, and the way the models progressed is really incredible. Um, for autonomous vehicles specifically, we're starting to branch into different sensor modalities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've also released, it's called LiDAR Gen. Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, a model post, um, built on Cosmos that generates kind of similar scenes, but purely um, with LiDAR data. Um, so I know we, we've heard from autonomous vehicle developers that you know, they want to be able to generate radar, LiDAR, all the sensors mm -hmm. that are on the vehicle. Um, so we're starting to you know, progress into those, into those different modalities. Okay, uh, I, I also, uh, at GDC in San Jose, I had talked to Sonia Fiddler. She was using this as well to, for Gaussian splatting, a lot of times it's, it, the quality is constricted to the reference images you see. Yes. You can't basically make up part of the scene if you haven't seen it at all. So what they were doing was you, you capture, let's say, a car driving down one lane, and then use Cosmos to predict what it would have looked like driving down the next couple parallel lanes, and then use those to retrain the Gaussian splat, and then all of a sudden you have much better fidelity. So I think you know that's one thing that people should think about is you're not just getting images out to train perhaps where you are. You can use it to predict a greater world around you, improve improve your simulation quicker that way, and not not to have to drive down the road. You said uh, five, six, seven times. Yes. And things change. You know, people walk by. Well, you can keep things consistent. Exactly, and in, uh, in um, Cosmos and then Omniverse Interact, which is our 3D Gaussian slatting based mm -hmm. neural reconstruction technology, are incredibly compatible. Um, so I think as what you were mentioning before um, is our fixer model, which we're coming out with a um, kind of updated Cosmos based fixer model in probably a couple weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And we're able to use Cosmos to then address artifacts in reconstruction and improve the quality mm -hmm. um, and really make sure that what you're capturing can be used. You know, there's no no more bad data. We, yep. can, we can make use of all of it. Okay. Uh, one last question. So, uh, I know I only know Predict One well, and that you know you had millions of hours of training data. Do you know how much training data went into Cosmos Predict 2.5? Is it uh, are we talking about still hundreds of millions of hours of footage? Um, I believe we're still kind of in like the 20 million hours. Um, I know these models are smaller. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to combine three models into one. Um, so they're much more lightweight, um, but able to generate kind of okay. even more. Um, so, so Cosmos Reason still exists, but yes. this is, I believe this is using it as part of the pipeline within the, the predict model uses Reason. Uh, yes. No, so how you would use Reason in this pipeline? So you can generate, um, generate the, the video, um, and you know, predict and transfer aren't 100% perfect. So we can use reason to kind of critique and evaluate the data that's generated, and it can flag, you know, if it's e-self hallucination or this wouldn't be a realistic scenario. Interesting. And kind of flag the the um, the scenarios you wouldn't want to use. So then you end up with a data set that is mm -hmm. kind of quality and, and useful for your for your use case. All right. Well, Katie, it's been a pleasure learning more about what you're using Cosmos for, and I look forward to seeing what's coming out next year. Okay. Of course. Thank Thanks for having me. <laughs>